Well, um, I know you've got a lot to tell us, uh, Summer. Uh, yeah. So uh, please, please uh, over to you now. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, well, uh, first of all, I'll start by saying that we're definitely not seasoned online presenters. <laughs> In fact, I have never done this before. So, uh, but since I'm a writer, I've written a basic outline in big print to keep me organized as uh, there's a fair bit I'd like to cover uh, if the time permits. And my husband, Jim, says that I talk too fast. <laughs> so please do let me know if you want me to slow down. And uh, there there will be a replay available, uh, you know, if you want to look at look at it again or whatever, if you miss something. And uh, there's too many gyms today, so I'll try not to confuse my gym here with uh, Jim Willis, who I'll be mentioning from time to time. And uh, also, my gym has put up at the top of the chat here a bunch of links that uh, about some of the things that I'm going to be discussing in case you want to follow up any of them. So you might want to copy those down. Um, and please also know that we are not experts or authorities in anything, nor do we claim to be. Uh, we're on the same journey of discovery as all of you, and we feel like we're only on the tip of the iceberg in our exploration. So please take away whatever you resonate with and just leave the rest behind. So we're here to share today what we can because our spirit guides wanted us to do it. <laughs> so we're always happy to do God's work. So here we are. Uh, whenever we have the opportunity, because there is a, we recognize the importance of all of us contributing whatever we can at this time of the great awakening of humanity as the veils begin to lift. So we're all here to learn, and uh, um, we'd love to hear your contributions at the end as well, because we like to learn from you too. So um, <clears throat> there's many paths that can be taken when you're climbing up a mountain, and each of us has a unique journey. So please understand that we're not saying that what we do is the only way. <laughs> as Jim Willis and many others explain, our souls have individuated here in the material realm of what we call 3D in order to have varied and unique experiences which we then contribute to the larger source consciousness. And um, the larger source co consciousness that some people call God, which for me stands for great overall design. Um, like Jim Willis said, the God word is so loaded with baggage that many of us prefer another term, like source consciousness. Um, but he also said, please just use whatever word works for you. And speaking of Jim Willis, it was indeed a shock to hear that he had died in June, um, not so long after his talk uh, here. But um, he was a man who was very concerned about being prepared for death, and he put a lot of energy into that. So, you know, I'm totally confident that he was lovingly accompanied by his guides on this exciting transition, and that he faced it fearlessly and with the knowledge of anticipation of where he was going. So if you're interested in the subject of prepare, preparing for de the death transition, uh, be sure and check out in the links there William Bullman, who is a fantastic uh, talker about that subject. Um, I hope some of you had time to review Jim Willis's presentation in April, uh, in which he explains the multidimensional universe of our souls exist in and how the five senses we have agreed to limit ourselves to when we come here actually constrict our capacity to know and understand what our bodies still innately know as sixth sense and beyond. Also, he explained how our brains are merely receivers and transmitters operating in the infinite field of frequency information that surrounds us, and how they act as power, a powerful filtering system, only letting through a small amount of frequency that we can handle with our five cents equipment. So um, thus we're, we're actually merely players in an elaborate game or theater or construct, creation, simulation, illusion, whatever you want to call it, uh, which we think of as reality. And in preparation for this talk, I spent considerable time trying to put my own current understanding of, of all this and how it relates to dousing and our other senses into words. Um, but as many near-death experiencers say, we simply don't have the vocabulary to describe these concepts. Um, but I did do my best. And finally, I asked my guys if I had it correct. And just like Jim Willis's guys told him about his pyramid <laughs> that he drew, mine said, sort of. So 
then a couple of days ago, actually, I, I discovered a podcast that Jim Willis had done a few years ago about the nature of reality. And I decided to listen to it on my trusty pocket recorder while I was watering the garden. And to my amazement, I heard him giving a nearly identical explanation of my uh, my attempt to do so. So that gave me a bit more confirmation and confidence that uh, that that my attempt at it uh, uh, isn't probably too far off. So the link to that interview with Jim Willis is in the list in the chat. And, uh, you know, I, I highly recommend it. It's well worth a listen. And from that, I also discovered that Jim Willis has been very involved in the community that's exploring our lost and hidden long, long, long human history. Yay, a subject which has been the obsession and fascination of my life in recent years. And it's one of the reasons that my Jim and I are now drawn to Central and South America, where we're headed. Um, so what a bonus from Jim Willis. And I, I think I'll get some of his books as well. Anyway, on the subject of the nature of this reality, some of you no doubt already know that the frequency of the Earth is going through a very dramatic shift at this time, which is often referred to as moving from three, the third dimension to the fifth dimension. And I personally don't care for the word dimension because we're not really talking about measurements. We're talking about frequency and vibrational qualities and the hypermaterialism of the third density and the much less material and more spiritual fifth density. In short, the higher and finer vibration, the, the higher and finer the vibration is, the less material something is. And the lower or slower the vibration, the more material it is. Thus, the spirit realm operates in a high frequency, particularly 5D and up. And we are now living in the 3D in the process of moving through 4D on the way to 5D. That's what currently what we're going through. <laughs> and Jim Willis and so many others who are in touch with what I refer to as the beyond. Jim stressed the huge importance of humanity embracing and moving into this expanded reality that's beyond the thick veil that surrounded us humans for so long. And this is such an amazing and exciting time to be alive and why so many of us chose to be here to experience this great awakening from the illusion, the Maya, that we believe is reality to the discovery that indeed, just as Shakespeare told us, all the world is a stage and all the men and women are merely players. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so one of the first things that my Jim and I <clears throat> came to know when we contacted the beyond is that this is the last spin for both of us on the 3D incarnation wheel. Anyone who's familiar with Bob Monroe and William Bullman and their out-of-body explorations will understand that there's there are definite experiences we can create and explore. There, there are indefinite, infinite, that's the word I want. There are infinite experiences we can create and explore in the universe in which this realm is just one tiny experimental construct. And when Jim and I decide to finish playing this particular game uh, and leave these physical bodies behind, well, that's it for us here. We're going to go do something completely different. <laughs> so, uh, so this, and uh, apparently this is the last lifetime here for many other people as well. So, um, so four and a half years ago, when the whole virus hoax extravaganza began, Jim and I, we were pretty quick to figure out what was going on as far as the motives of those who have assumed power in this world. But we had no idea back then about the ultimate spiritual nature of the new adventure that humanity was being ushered into, nor that this amazing path of awakening and discovery is being assisted by our spirit guides. Later in this presentation, I'll discuss our experiences with spirit guides, but for now, dousing. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so here's how we discovered body dousing. And thus, we were able to eliminate the intermediary of dowsing tools and learn how to directly use the best dowsing tool we'll ever have on our own bodies. My husband, Jim, is English, um, and he's been a dowser all of his life. He came from a family line of dowsers, in particular connected with the canals. And uh, he came upon books like The Old Straight Track pretty early on. And being a metal worker, he made his own set of L rods and began dousing the energy lines at ancient sites around the British Isles. Uh, pattern of the past by Guy Under. Uh, pattern of the past. Uh, sorry. Yes, as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pattern of the past. I know. Those two books are brilliant. Sorry, got the wrong book. Um, um, 
sadly, he didn't know about Hamish Miller or your dowsing society or anything at that time because he'd have been right in there with you. So what a shame. But uh, where I was living in rural Canada, other than uh, the common folklore practice of consulting well witchers about the best place to find water, and the only other use for dowsing I knew of was the folklore practice of sexing the eggs we chose to put under our setting hens with, by using a pendulum. And I managed about 95% accuracy with selecting the female eggs. So that was good. So in the course of our spiritual awakening over the last four years, Jim and I consulted a local medium about past lives, but got, we got nothing of value from her on that score. Uh, however, although she herself used a pendulum and recommended we do the same, she did happen to synchronistically drop the golden nugget of information that we needed, that you can also just use your body as a pendulum. Well, both Jim and I, we were eager to reach into the beyond and find out more. So we messed around with pendulums and Jim with his dousing rods, but we found the results were quite unsatisfying. We weren't as skilled as Jim Willis at doing it, I guess. <laughs> However, Jim found the body dousing idea really fascinating and um, already having the dowser's ability to tune into his subtle body, he, he soon perfected this method and was getting very interesting results. And before long, he announced his discovery that he had spirit guides and was asking questions and getting yes and no answers. So um, not being an experienced dowser myself, it took me longer to perfect the body dowsing. But since all of you are experienced dowsers, I'm sure you can pick up the technique pretty quickly. Before long, I also discovered my own spirit guides and was gradually set up a communication with them. So here's a little section called communicating with plants. Around this time, we had a large plant table with lights set up in our living room for growing winter salad greens. And having reread one of my all time favorite books, The Secret Life of Plants, it's in the chat there. If you haven't ever read it, goodness, please read it. So good. Um, and it, it occurred to me that after reading that book, it occurred to me that the plants might enjoy some music. Um, like the experiments with music that were described in the book. So uh, I was learning to communicate directly with my guides. I thought, why not just try directly asking the plants if they'd like some music? So first of all, I asked the obvious questions to see if they would be interested in talking to me. You know, would you like some water? Are you getting enough light? And to my amazement, I found that they were very respons responsive to me. Yeah, they were very happy to talk. So I asked them if they liked some music, but all I got was what I call the bob, which is this sort of vibration in the middle point, which I always take to mean we don't understand or we don't know. So I asked them, do you know what music is? And the response was no. So the book said that the plant that plants like classical music, so I downloaded some onto the flash drive and sat it, the player on the table. And after a day of music, I, I asked the plants if they knew what music is, and they said yes. So I said, did they like it? And they said yes. However, we ourselves, after a few days, we found the classical music a bit boring. <laughs> and the book said that plants like Indian ragas even better than classical. So I tried some of that, but we ourselves found that that was very unsettling. It made us really, uh. so, <laughs> so I asked the plants if they liked it, and thankfully they said no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing too. So I went in search of some flute, flute music because I thought that that might be appreciated by all of us sharing the household. And, uh, and some particular South American music just kept coming up over and over in front of my face. So I recorded some of that. And not only did the plants love it, but I soon discovered that this particular music was a pivotal, pivotal gift from my guides because of its ability to elevate my own frequency, often to a blissful state. And this made my connection with my guides and with the beyond very much easier and stronger. So we were never sure, you know, if those plants preferred this music over the classical and raga because they were picking up on our vibes that we enjoyed it or whether, you know, it was them themselves. But later I learned about the massive importance of bird and bee song to plants. And I recorded some of that for them and discovered that they preferred that above anything else. They just really loved the birds. So that's another fascinating subject to research if it interests you. Um, English Dawn Chorus. Yeah, yeah. So, um, however, the flute music gift, thanks to my guides through the plants, 
uh, still remains the soundtrack of, of, of our lives and it, it lifting and keeping us in a vibrational frequency that contributes to our ability to connect with the spirit realm. So this is not to say that music has to play a role in the spiritual journeys of others, but it is and has been a very powerful tool in many spiritual practices throughout our human history, and it's well worth a try. So if you want to do it, choose some music that positively stirs your emotions and makes you feel really, really good, and try making it the soundtrack of your life for a while and just see what happens. So meanwhile, our ability to communicate with the plants grew just like they did. We discovered that they could tell us if they wanted watering or fertilizing, if they preferred a certain position on the table, if they wanted the lights lowered or raised, etc. And the Secret Life of Plants book, it actually said that in the lab studies, when plants were given the means to do so by the use of electrodes, they even opened and closed their own ventilation windows. So never underestimate the intelligence of plants. At this point, I began tending the plants with a lot of love, and I did not like the idea of cutting and eating them. But they assured me that they didn't mind at all and were happy to be of service nourishing us. It was their purpose for being. From there, we moved to communicating with our numerous houseplants. And in spring, we became aware of a whole new dimension, so to speak, um, in our relationship with outdoor plants and gardens. We discovered we could find out directly from the plants what they wanted and needed in the way of soil, fertilizer, water, and light. And sometimes they weren't sure about our terminology and they just they bob in the middle at good questions like, would you like some lime or would you like some Ormus minerals? So I soon learned to ask, do you know what Ormus minerals are? And if not, I would put a little on the ground next to the plant, come back in five minutes and ask again. And then they all knew what I was talking about. So they'd learned our terminology. Um, they seem to work in plant families. And once a plant knew our term for something, all the plants in that family on the property knew what that term meant. So Jim also received a lot of garden advice and wisdom about all kinds of things from one of his guides who had been a head gardener in a, at an estate in England in the late 1700s. And at that time, we were also making electroculture antennas by spiraling copper wire around canes. And it seemed that something, maybe the earth energy spirits or energy lines themselves or whatever, were able to tell us where to precisely place these antennas for the best results. And if you don't know about electroculture, fascinating and, you know, related to the energies of dowsing as well. So there's, again, a link in that chat there that you might want to check out. And it's all over YouTube, electroculture. Just look it up. Um, so um, and, um, an example is we had, we had one very sick young apple tree that we were going to cut down. And I asked it if it would like me to try, it would, it would like to have trying an antenna nearby. And it told me, actually, that it wanted the copper wire spiraled around its trunk. It gave me specific directions through body dowsing, how it wanted the, the wire arranged. And, and afterwards, it just told me it was so appreciative of my work. And it still continues to tell me that. So within a few weeks, it took on a whole new healthy life. And it's heavily laden with apples this year, which is neat. So Jim, who's an engineer and can do or make just about anything, my Jim, has, he has some very special technical guides who gave him explicit information about how to best engineer two tall electroculture antennas beside our greenhouse. So, um, by the way, we found that, that guides love working with energy and they know all about it. I mean, that's the field that they themselves exist in. So, um, you know, you can always ask guides <laughs> information about energy. Um, you know, we didn't know with the sort of electroculture and the plants and that. We didn't know if it was like the elementals that we were actually communicating with, like the Findhorn folks did, or the overarching the Gaia spirit, or, 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 you know, but whatever it is, it works. And we haven't ever yet met a plant that didn't have something to say. So try talking with yours. <laughs> plants uh, And plants really do love it when you admire them and tell them they're beautiful and send them energy, particularly from your eyes or in the case of trees, when you hug them. And Jim Willis spoke about dousing the aura of trees and how expanded the aura became after he told the tree how much he loved it. So as many people already know, there really is something energetic about talking to your plants, and even more so when you discover that it's a, a two-way conversation. So giving love, admiration, and appreciation is actually an exchange of energy between you and the plant with them returning what you give them. 
Uh, communicating with plants is one of the easiest uses of body dowsing, and it has uh, it, it has also greatly enhanced our explorations with creating electroculture, organ devices, and various other energy and frequency-based modalities. So um, another use of body dowsing. Uh, many of you uh, are maybe familiar with the mus muscle testing as a form of kinesiology. And even with some people use this system like that, you know, uh, uh, for uh, your fingers and rings to get yes and no answers. Um, and and those, that's a form of body dowsing as well. But we soon discovered that body dowsing easily gives us all the information we need about which foods, drinks, supplements, body products, etc., are good for us, which are neutral, and which are harmful. So in this time of the great poisoning of humanity, the ability to acquire this information from within ourselves is invaluable. Sometimes we're told that washing food is necessary. Sometimes uh, that placing it on an organ plate will positively change the energy of it. And often we're advised that we uh, that a treatment with our little hold a clock, hold a Clark auto zapper. Also in the uh, a link to that in the chat there. Um, that 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 will um, help change the frequency uh, and restructure the frequency of the food item and and, and, uh, and from something that's not so good to one that's benef of benefit and health. So these methods can also be used to restructure water, by the way, uh, so that it's healthy for us rather than being chaotically structured and unusable, uh, unusable for our bodies. That's organ, organ plates, organ pucks, um, and, uh, and little zappers like that one. Um, so... Um, and when Jim and I go shopping, <laughs> we're the people standing in the aisle <laughs> doing this <laughs> as our inner guidance helps us select what's good for us to consume and what isn't. You know, we look, may look silly, but we don't care. Well, the of Egypt, but never mind. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> it seems like in this use of body dowsing, it seems like we're connecting with the wisdom of our inner selves, you know, who, as Jim Willis says, has all the answers unless we can gain personal, practical knowledge about what our bodies need and don't need, what's of benefit and what's harmful. So whatever it is we're tapping into, all of this information resides in the infinite, energetically charged in information fields that surround us, the etheric or morphic field, the fantastic memory of water that water carries. And remember, we're made up of 85% water or so. And many know about Dr. Emoto um, and uh, how he could change uh, the, the structure of water. And there's a link uh, in the chat list there to Beta Austin's amazing and beautiful work with water. So, you know, do check that out if it interests you at all. Um, information and knowledge is also stored in everything. It's stored in the ground, in the trees, in stone, and the entire natural world itself. And the way to access all this information is by looking within, not looking outside of ourselves. We have to look within to see without. And the beyond is actually only accessible through our inner portholes, which we came here equipped with, including our chakra system, our heart, our nervous system, and our pineal gland or third eye. As dowsers know, our bodies are actually endowed with all the finely tuned equipment we need to tap into uh, uh, we need to tap into these energy information fields, uh, although these abilities, for the most part, in humans have been dumbed down or calcified by fluoride in the case of the pineal gland, and they lie dormant and unused in most people living deep in the 3D density with a heavily programmed filtering system. So how do your body douse? Douses have learned how to tune in to a certain element of information through the use of twigs or rods or pendulums, whatever, that pick up the tiniest subtle energy messages that run through our bodies to our hands and then influence the tools. And this ability requires a certain mental and bodily, I call it the letting go, so as not to interfere with the information coming through. Hamish spoke about this, and Jim Willis talks about immersing yourself in it, and I'm sure you're all familiar with that feeling. I call it being in the nowhere place. And for me, it is cent it's centered somewhere in my pelvic area, my abdomen, my gut. Um, and that's where I focus on just letting go. So if you have any thoughts or expectations about the answers to questions you're going to pose, 
you must reach a point of neutrality, removing all emotion, any attachment to any particular outcome, if you want a correct answer that's, un that's uninfluenced. Um, and this can take some practice, but once you find that space, that nowhere space, it, it just becomes natural to go there when you ask your questions. Body dousing has to be done standing up. So far, <laughs> we have we tried lying down. We tried sitting in chairs. No, no, it doesn't seem to work. So uh, we, you know, you have to do it. You have to do it standing up. Um, and I stand with my feet parallel, about a foot or two apart, um, so so that I'm stable and comfortable. And my arms and hands hanging loosely at my sides, and my joints, particularly my knees and hips, just loose, that letting go of any physical rigidity. And in the beginning, I found it useful to imagine one of those inflatable balloon dolls with feet anchored to a board, with the body free to bob or sway in all directions. And most people find it best to close their eyes for body dousing. And this is especially useful for people like me because I'm a strong visualizer. And, and a lot of information comes to me in picture form. So at first, I practiced um, while standing a few inches away from the work surface in my studio because with my eyes closed, I would then know if my body had swayed slightly forwards or slightly backwards because I'd, I'd hit hit the, the table. Um, and just as working with pendulums or rods, the first thing to do is to establish your yes and no positions. This is deduced by asking a lot of obvious questions, e.g., is my name Summer? Is my name Richard? Is my hair black? Are my eyes blue? Etc. You can also use nature or even household objects to establish your yeses and nos by asking, is this leaf purple? Is this flower green? Is this dish blue? Whatever. Or asking it, if your dog is a cat or a chicken. For most people, including Jim and I, the yes answer is given by an automatic and uncontrolled tipping forward of the body from the pelvic area. Um, and the no answer is the backward tilt from the same area. So in the beginning, with my knees loose, I could feel the slight pull of my calf muscles activating to attempt to keep me upright and stable with the slight lean forward that yes made me do. And my thigh muscles doing the same thing for the slight backwards of no, uh, just trying to, to right me and keep me, keep me uh, upright. Some people find that they sway from one side to another rather than backwards and forwards, just, but just see what works for you and confirm it over and over through trials with obvious answers. Practice, practice, practice. Walk around your home and garden and practice by asking an obvious question to anything you see. And you can begin with a two-way conversation with houseplants by asking if they want some water and then checking the pot for moisture to confirm the answer that they've given you. So I, I thought right here I'd attempt to give you a little demo uh, of this. So I'm gonna try and stand up here and uh, and see if I can get my picture in the <laughs> in the right place. Okay. Let's see. So I think I have to go way back, probably, to get Whoa. enough of my body in here. Okay. So my head's not there now. <laughs> way back. All right. So I'm back here now. All right. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions, and I'm not. I'm going to go into that nowhere place, which is space that's like right here, no rigidity in my body, and I'm going to ask, is that table blue? No. Are those walls yellow? Yes. Is the floor made of wood? Yes. Is the floor pink? <laughs> Sometimes you need to be standing near to something to stop yeah. it falling over. I, maybe, I've got maybe that problem here. Frame. Yeah. If you get yeah. strong, or if you get strong arts, you might end up flattening your back or your face. Yeah, yeah. it's true. It's true. Um, so, um, let's see. All right. So, if the answer to a question is unknown, or perhaps a food is neither good nor harmful to me, or you know, my body remains slightly vibrating in that middle neutral position, which I call the bob. <clears throat> and when this happens, I can qualify the question with a further question, says as, such as I often say, does it make any difference one way or the other? And they'll say no. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but usually get a definite answer. Sometimes they say yes, and then I have to use some more questions to see, well, which 
thing is it then? So, um, you can but say, is the answer maybe? Is the answer maybe? And they'll say yes. <laughs> but often we get that bob position if our question is somehow muddy or confusing. Um, questions are taken absolutely literally in the spirit realm, and they have to be clear, concise, and direct, keeping them short and avoiding the use of double negatives. So if you get the bob, just try re, try re, we just try rewording our questions sometimes and, and, and then we get the answer. So it's not necessary to speak your question out loud. You can just think it, but often it feels natural to speak it, does to me anyway, in a sort of a soft voice. And sometimes we have barely got the question into thought form before it's answered, right, Jim? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we go. So you know they're already tuned in. And on some occasions, our yes or no answers are so powerful that they almost knock us off our feet, as though for emphasis. And you know, we boy, we get some of those where you know, yeah, you got to grab the table or something. I often reverse my questions to verify if I've received the correct answer. You know, flip it around and see if you then get the opposite answer, the, the no. And uh, and as a, a listener, I've done one listener to Jim Willis's uh, question and answers uh, said was um, asking something you've been told is true is a subjective question because everyone's truth is not the same and that's absolutely right. So I often verify by asking if what they have told me is correct. And often the most uh, reliable answers that you would not likely have expected, you know, are, are, are the ones that you can trust the most because, well, obviously they're <laughs> what you didn't, would never have expected. So um, um, that's where, you know, trust is called for in this process. But uh, Jim and I do have the advantage of being able to verify with each other answers uh, that our, gives guides, our guides give us, sorry, which, uh, which can be very, very helpful. Also, guides are not always right 100% of the time. I'll, I'll attempt later on to explain why they can't accurately predict what we call the future. Uh, but we can trust that they love us and that they're there for us. And before attempting to connect with our guides, <clears throat> Jim and I both specified that we only wanted to connect with high-level guides who love us and are there to keep us on track and hold our best interests. We also <clears throat> specified that we wanted a warm and friendly relationship with our guides rather than an austere master-student kind of arrangement. <clears throat> As sovereign beings here on earth and also sovereign souls in the spirit realm, we just don't buy into the authoritarian hierarchy model <clears throat> of worshiping anyone or anything as being higher or better or greater than ourselves. <clears throat> Well, the versions of guides who presented themselves to us have indeed been warm and loving and friendly, although we later came to understand that they actually repre are they're actually representatives of their larger collectives, and those are representative of larger collectives all the way back to the source one consciousness. So, in other words, it's filtered down so that we can have an individual <clears throat> an individual guide. So as with, all, as with all dousing, the yes and no answers, they can feel really limiting and frustrating at times. But you learn how to use, you, you learn how to word your questions and, and your connection with, as your connection with the beyond becomes stronger and stronger, you find that there's many other ways of getting answers and information. Um, lots of avenues open up. When I don't understand an answer my guides have given me, or they say that there's something I can do or learn about a situation in question, I always ask if they'll just, will you send me more information? And they say yes. And sometimes this comes in the form of a, a picture, you know. I mean, on the odd occasion, I've just gotten a word right in front of my face. But they, sometimes I get a picture, I get a diagram. Um, um, <clears throat> sometimes I get a, a, a download of an entire concept, which is really hard, <laughs> but it just comes kind of as a whole <clears throat> unit. Sometimes the answers come in dreams and um, or often uh, something just comes into my up in my inbox, <laughs> you know, it's some quirky thing, somebody sent me something or whatever. And I think, ah, or sometimes it presents itself right there in front of me while I'm researching something else. So once you've asked for more information, you have to be observant and open to the mysterious ways that it will come to you. Um, for instance, some people experience a book suddenly falling off a shelf, lying open to the page with the information they've asked for. 
or seemingly by chance they cross paths with someone who simply hands them the info that they were looking for. So don't dismiss these things as mere coincidences or accidents. See them for the beautiful synchronicity that the universe provides when you're tuned into it. <clears throat> so here's, uh, I'm going to move a little more into connecting with spirit guides. Um, we're all electromagnetic beings functioning in, electromagne in an electromagnetic universe. As Tesla famously said, it's all about energy, frequency, and vibration. The higher the frequency, the closer and finer the waveforms are. The frequency of thoughts is much higher and faster and finer than the frequency of a rock. So the spirit world functions at a very high frequency where even thought is replaced by symbols uh, which transfer an entire concept in a split second. So the more um, physical things become, the lower their frequency until it is visible in the material density, you know, such as our bodies, including our bodies. Uh, so through avenues such as meditation, automatic writing, music, dancing, drumming, yoga, dreams, out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, and or the use of plant medicines and psychedelics, or in gyms in my case, the use of Ormus minerals, <laughs> we can elevate our frequency and open and activate our dormant pineal gland, which is our connection to the beyond, and also correct our chakra system and get it lined up and all, all working with the pineal gland. So, But one of the most fertile forms for connecting is just as we're falling asleep at night and just as we're waking up in the morning. So don't rush these transitional times and pay attention to what comes comes to you at that time, during those times. So to communicate with our spirit guides, to communicate with any spirit guides, <laughs> we need to raise our frequency as high as possible and they will in turn lower theirs. So we raise ours, they lower theirs um, to a point where we can connect. And um, I think Think of this, especially when I first started doing it, I think of this as building a bridge between us. Um, and, and it can take practice to do that. Uh, you can even visualize it as, as, as a bridge. Um, at the time I first connected with my guides, Jim and I were discovering electroculture that I talked about earlier, and we were working with copper antennas. And my guides <laughs> advised me to start wearing copper on my body as part of my bridge building to increase my conductivity and enhance our connection. And they gave me specifics about what to make and wear, necklace, bracelets, anklets, et cetera, which I did. And after about six months, as our connection grew stronger and easier, I was told that I no longer needed these. Some people find that crystals and various gem, gems can be energy connecting aids too. And, um, um, and I also found in the beginning that I, I had a certain location in the house where I felt that there was a good energy and I wouldn't be disturbed. And I, so going to that spot was kind of the setup for my, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to go talk to my guides now. Now I can just do it anyway. <laughs> With daily practice, I developed the ability to close my eyes at any time and fall easily into a light trance state to connect. Ask questions, get answers, and have a conversation. It's the same for Jim. We can both now connect at any time, any place with our guides without giving it any thought. And the same for connecting with plants and with our inner selves who tell us what's good and not isn't for us. So it's just second nature to us. And as Jim Willis said in the podcast I listened to just the other day, a couple of days ago, which is in the chat there, he and his wife could not imagine how they ever lived without douse, the, the dousing connection. And my Jim and I feel the same about our connection, you know, to the, to the energy field that constantly surrounds us and to our guides and to the beyond. Like, how did we ever live without this? One thing I would mention is that most people are able to visualize in their mind's eye on their mental screen, which is, uh, that's one reason why guided meditations are, are so popular, you know, so you see it sort of close your eyes. However, some people, like my Jim, are not able to visualize in that way. And for Jim, it could be because he experienced several lifetimes in which he was blind and had to develop other means of perception, which he now still has and brought along with him. So. He's not blind in this lifetime, but he has a different way of perceiving other than visualizing. Just keep loosening your glasses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've always been good at visualizing ever since childhood. And interestingly, I soon discovered that when I am communicating with my guides, only the right side of my inner 
sight or screen or located in my forehead is activated when I have my eyes closed. The place in which I see my guides and often receive pictures, symbols, diagrams, it's always lit up above my right eye, while the whole left side of my inner forehead, screen, whatever, remains dark and inactive. And, and it was a while before I realized that, well, of course, this corresponds with the intuitive side of my brain and the rational, logical side, which isn't involved in any of this stuff. So when I talk to my guides, I often also feel... Um, a sort of a, like an energetic connecting cord pulling upwards from my crown chakra and kind of like down my chakra system. So, But we, while we were establishing our early connections with the beyond, one of our first questions was, do I have spirit guides? Well, it turns out we all have spirit guides, although we may go through our entire lives never even knowing it, or maybe many lifetimes not knowing it. Often these guides are members of our soul family or larger soul groups, although not always. It seems that they are all part of larger collectives, although they present themselves to us in an individual form that we can relate to, e.g. as people who we recognize, uh, or sometimes as other beings and entities, including animals. They, they, have, they have some individual form in which they can present themselves to us. Um, Guides are not incarnate form while um, taking on the guide role. However, most, but not all, have been incarnated in human form at least once here in this realm over the millennia of our human history, according to what they've told us. Now, don't know. You might find out something different. But from what we've come to understand, we often exchange roles throughout incarnations with members of our soul families, with us guiding them from the other side. And when, if they incarnate, they're reversing the, the roles. So Jim found that his guides have been with him since birth, and he has invited some visiting guides from time to time as well. I discovered that I was on my fifth set of guides in this lifetime, and recently I moved to my sixth set. Um, most but not all of them being members of my soul family. My soul family is 16, a total of 16. In fact, most of my soul family is here in incarnate form because they want to experience the great awakening that humanity is going through. So uh, my main anchor guide, Jose, died in 2021 in order to be able to go to the other side and help guide the rest of us and our family, you know, from there. So everyone's experience with guides will be unique to them, and I don't want to implant any rigid ideas that might influence your experience. So if you're interested, just see what you can find out for yourselves. Um, we have found, we've also found that, uh, you know, our, uh, we all, we've only ever made a few visits to psychics and mediums to, to try to gather information, but, you know, uh, we've, we've found that it's produced reports about our supposed guides and our supposed past lives that, that really have no resonance whatsoever with us, resonance, and, and sometimes it seems more like a guess based on info that we've given them or, or, or a product of their own imagination, I don't know, but anytime you involve an intermediary, their own filters can't help but influence the outcome. So the, the information that we've received directly from the beyond and our guides very often produces what we call the tears of knowing. When our heart knows deep within it that something we learn or are told or our guides or even hear on a video is indeed our own truth. Our eyes immediately just uncontrollably well up with tears, and sometimes we just even have to cry. Um, it feels so choked up. Yeah, it choked up. Speak. Yeah, yeah. Hard to hard to talk even. In fact, we've never cried so much in our lives as we have these last several years. <laughs> it's almost a daily occurrence now. <laughs> but um, as I was reviewing the links that I was going to put there in the chat, uh, I was reviewing reviewing them yesterday. Just a, uh, and I heard a reference, actually, to what we call the tears of knowing, because I haven't heard anybody else talk about that, but yeah, anyway. I've, I've, read, I've realized about the links. If you joined after I put the links there, oh. you won't be able to see them. Oh, dear. I'm talking about these links, and you can't even see them. Well, perhaps we can post them again at the end or something, or maybe those tech guys that are arranging this can figure out a way of copying and pasting them on. Uh, because there's some really, there are some really good, uh, good links in there. But there's one, one, uh, one. There's one link to uh, uh, about uh, our crystalline-based bodies change, trans, 
forming to our crystalline base bodies. And they talk, they mentioned the tears of knowing as well. Um, but this knowing is, is not a brain type knowing. It, it's, it's a heart type knowing. It's really hard to describe, but it's an amazing feeling. And it removes all doubt from the information that we've been given. So um, many of our revelations from guides about themselves, their relationship to us and about our soul families and about our past lives have all produced this reaction. And uh, as has some very emotive music that triggers something in our souls. And also there is a deep recognition when we hear certain explanations and revelations from others that resonate with us. And we also get that knowing in our heart feeling. Our second question uh, was how many guides do we have? And we can confirm that there is no standard answer, <laughs> although some psychics insist we all have three guides or we all have two guides. Well, we didn't find that was true at all. Plus, they can change and the numbers can change anyway. Um, and then we ask, then we started asking for information about the identity of these guides um, uh, who are connecting with us. And my guide Jose first revealed himself to me in a, a startling flash insight that I'll just I'll never forget. It's just imprinted on me. And I, I later discovered that he and I have shared many lifetimes together. So uh, Jim and I followed these inquiries with many questions about our soul families, our past lives, and how this whole soul system works, much of which still remains a mystery <laughs> yet to be discovered by us. <laughs> um, let's see. I did tell my guides at the beginning of my connection with them that I want to know everything. I've, I've wanted to know ever since I was a child. Who am I? Why am I here? <laughs> I, I've, I've always had all these questions. I want to know what, all about it. But my guide said, uh, so I'm really, really thrilled that I'm starting to learn all that. But, um, but they always assured me that all will be revealed. That's what they tell me. All will be revealed. I just had no idea at the first time they told me that how big the all is. It's really big. It says, can Thomas soak slower? <laughs> I'm doing it again. Okay, I'll try. Don't, don't, not too slow. I'll try. <laughs> not too slow because i got a lot of stuff here to talk about. <laughs> um, anyway, I didn't know how, I, you know, I, all will be revealed. All is, is infinite. I, I realize that now. But uh, they say that they're giving it to me as fast as I can handle it. And it is sometimes overwhelming, I have to admit. Um, but we've slowly gathered a lot of information like what I've been speaking about today, and we continue to learn more all the time. Uh, I do a lot of writing and often feel that the information is channeled through me that way. Um, in fact, uh, it has been many times. In fact, a lot of what I'm telling you was. <laughs> but uh, many other times in my life, I guess, it's been channeled to me in that way, but I, I just didn't realize it at the time. But recently, our guide suggested that Jim and I have some group sessions with us all, our, with both of us, and our, all our combined guides participating. And wow, that is something else. Unfortunately, we've been so busy in recent months that we haven't had time to indulge in this high energy pastime. But we hope to get back to it once our property sells and we hit the road for this completely new stage of our lives in which spiritual development will be the major focus. So here's a bit more about the nature of the so-called reality that we find ourselves in. Um, as I understand it at this particular point in time, and most of which Jim Willis sort of verified in that talk that I listened to a couple days ago. Um, <clears throat> let's see. When our souls choose to separate off a small portion of themselves, e.g. us, to come into third the third density of physicalness, we agree to drink the draft of forgetfulness of who we really are, where we come from, and how expansive we truly are. And we agree to abide by the other rules of this game too, which means we put on the virtual reality glasses that limit us to a very narrow frequency band of our five senses, filtering out everything else. And we agree to take on duality or polarity and linear time none of which exists in the spirit realm. And to set it all in motion, we're then given free will, just to see what we'll choose to create within this very narrow construct. What a fun game, eh? There's only, there's only unconditional love in the higher spirit realm. However, without motion, e.g. movement and emotion, it just is, and nothing else can be experienced. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's our where the source consciousness is from, but it, 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 that's nothing else can be experienced. 
by coming here to experience every possible thing that can be experienced within this game or this realm, this allows both our both, both the source and our own bodies to grow and evolve. And to my amazement, two days ago when I heard Jim Willis say the same thing, he said, God helps us to grow and we help God to grow. I thought that was really, really good. Linear time is a rule in this game so that we can learn the valuable skill of discernment, make decisions, and then experience the resulting consequences of our choices. Be they good or bad, we experience them in order to grow. And none of which can happen in the higher spirit realm because there is no linear time. Everything just exists all at once in a present. And without a system of duality or polarity, there wouldn't be any choices for us to make anyway. Because we create our own realities, both individually and collectively, on this experimental stage of life, the game is for us to see what we can create within these extreme limitations. And the goal of the game is to eventually awaken and find our way back home to the unity of source consciousness again, where we're all one. For, <clears throat> for some souls, this process can take many lifetimes, and our guides and soul families help us plan this and every lifetime with a mission and a purpose in mind. However, our guides do not directly interfere in our lives here. My guides often say to me when I'm pestering for advice, you are the human here and you're in this game to do the human thing. Learn discernment, make decisions and experience the consequences. So here's an analogy of the role guides do play that I, I, I heard once and I really liked. As we're driving along the highway of life on this trip we planned out, we may get distracted by some attraction along the roadside, so we take the next exit to go and check it out. Our guides are there to gently nudge us back onto the on-ramp again towards our destination. From what I currently understand, it is impossible for anyone on either side of the veil to accurately predict the future, because there is always at any moment an infinite range of possibilities for a change of direction, depending upon where we choose to focus our energy in the form of thoughts, emotions, and actions. Forecasts can only be made assuming that we will continue on the same trajectory as we are currently on, and most people, individually and collectively, do just that and carry on the same well-worn track, and thus the same results are repeated over and over and over again, and thus they're predictable. That's how you can predict the future. The programming we receive here from birth onwards is designed with this plan in mind that we will carry on on that trajectory. But, and it's a big one, if we decide to shift the focus of our attention and energy to one of the other multitude of possibilities that lie before us, the no longer supported trajectory, it, falls, it fades away, while the new one takes on a life and becomes the reality, a move which then presents a whole new array of possibilities before us. Where attention goes, energy flows, and the chosen possibility becomes our reality, thus opening the next limitless field of possibilities etc cetera, etc cetera. goes on like that this is how we progress through a linear time through linear time um, creating our reality as we go every minute either staying on the same predictable path or choosing a new direction and this is true of humanity both individually and as a collective we do have free will at any time to change the focus of our intention and energy by program by the programming let me start that again. We do have free will at any time to change the focus of our attention and energy, but the programming that we have absorbed in this limited 3D realm is very, very heavy, causing most of us to merely sleepwalk or tiptoe through this life, feeling we are nothing but hapless victims of uncontrollable circumstances rather than creators of the reality. And this is why so much is done by the wannabe controllers of this construct to continue that programming and keep us distracted by constant division and polarity and fear and scarcity because they know that it's we, the actual creator beings, who will then create that reality. When we remove our attention and energy from all that programming and focus instead on a completely new and different direction, it's we who then create that reality. Although we have the choice to shift realities at any time and change the course of our lives. We do come here with agreed upon destiny markers on our paths, such as the inevitable destiny uh, of Jim and I meeting each other. But the possible circumstances of how that prescribed uh, destiny uh, even happens that are limitless. 
And though it was through a very unlikely series of synchronicities that we met, it was inevitable that it would happen somehow or other. So um, that's all set before you in your life plan before you come here. So it's just the same with our earthly realm. It's inevitable that the source consciousness is rising in frequency at this time to transcend into another density and taking us with it. This is our collective density, uh, destiny, sorry, this is our collective destiny, whether or not some of us or all of us or none of us understand what's going on. Um, however, those who do understand can wholeheartedly embrace this amazing transition and help it to be realized by giving it our full attention and in intention. And those who don't understand what is happening will soon find out that they're out of resonance with, with what's going on. And they may experience it as, as a time of fear, trauma, utter chaos, upheaval of all security, confusion, illness, and disease, darkness, and destruction. But right now we have the huge choice of embracing the new and creating it together or resisting the change, fighting it, keeping our heads in the sand, giving away our sovereign authority to those ready to to keep on taking it, and allowing ourselves to be continually drawn in, distracted and traumatized by the performance constantly being put on before us. When in fact everything changes when we individually and collectively wake up and step into our roles as the powerful, sovereign creator beings that we really are. This is at the crux of the, of the great awakening that's happening now, as we find ourselves in the end times of this particular game, construct, theater, creation, simulation, illusion, whatever you want to call it that we ourselves chose to participate in. This conclusion of the game has been forecast in all the branches of spiritual pursuit over eons of time, be it in the ancient texts, the prophecies of ancient peoples, the Kali Yuga cycles, the various calendars, the Eastern religions, and indeed the Bible itself in the book of Revelations, e.g. when all is being revealed. The word apocalypse actually means the great unveiling. Um, <clears throat> And this is the uh, at the end. This is the end of one era, but as the end of one era is also the beginning of another era, um, and that's where we are now at the beginning of a new world that could be of our own creation. Once once we've um, realized that 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 we are the creator beings, and and what could be more exciting than that? And we have to remember that Jesus told us we are all gods. And he said that as creators, we can do everything he did and more. So why carry on roles as, as victims of reality when we can be gods of creation? So all this is why so many souls have come into bodies now to witness this amazing time of awakening from the, the slavery and awakening from the illusion that we've been living in. And, uh, um, and we can also uh, have the possibility of just... Uh, freeing ourselves from the roles that we've taken on to play and be somebody else. So um, we're here to witness the time, timelines of past, present, and future all converging into uh, living in the present moment as humanity begins on the return trip to one consciousness. Consequently, our many lifetimes, which appear to be linear like a deck of cards all spread out on a table, they're now being stacked into a deck making them all available to us at this time, including talents, skills, and abilities we've developed over lifetimes. However, we are also witnessing the traumas we have built up and carried with us over many lifetimes, which are now rising to the surface to be energetically transmuted and cleared. And we can't take them with us. So this is why so many people are reporting that they are crying with no apparent reason. Uh, again, in the crystalline body video, they talk about that. Um, and certainly has happened to us, um, it's, it's, it's the trauma load that we carry that holds us in the 3D density, which is why the wannabe controllers keep piling more and more trauma on us. They, they have a massive vested interest in keeping us asleep in this density where we're controllable slaves. So the importance of clearing all this trauma in order to move to the new fifth density energy has been a major theme of my guides and many other guides messages um, and they really wanted me to put that in there today but um, you know like so many of the other topics I've kind of passed over on this talk that that would be a whole new talk so <laughs> um, but clearing trauma is is of prime importance right now individually and collectively 
So what I will say is that if you want to embrace and contribute to the rising of the consciousness of humanity, the very best thing you can do is to spend as much time as possible living whatever your passion is, doing whatever it is you most love to do, as long as it doesn't harm anyone else. If you love to do art, if you love to work with the homeless or the elderly or children, if you love to canoe on mountain lakes or create music, or guess what, if you just love to douse, whatever it is, doing what you are passionate about, doing what you love, not only elevates your own frequency, but affects all those around you too and all of humanity and helps this phenomenal transition that we're going through to be a lot easier. And just to make it clear, awakening to the spiritual realm does not mean becoming religious. In fact, organized religion, with all its dogma and hierarchies and chosen people, is just another form of creating division, and even worse, limiting the spiritual potential of followers to beliefs and hierarchical structures that control and keep them inside a particular small box. This is exactly what Jim Willis found when he became a Christian minister. So many near-death experiencers who were religious before their experience report that they left these religions once they gained a much more expansive view of the spirit realm where there is no division and we are all one. Over our very, very long human history, the Gnostics may have come the closest to figuring out this game we're in and that we're playing in and the role of religion in controlling it as the central tenet of Gnosticism is always being that we can all have a direct connection with source consciousness from which we come without the need for any intermediaries controlling, limiting, and interfering with or filtering this connection. No priests, no ministers, no hierarchies are required to connect with God. And I came into this life with that deep understanding myself, thanks to my five Gnostic lifetimes. So at this massively important time of the Great Awakening, our spirit guides are stepping out of the background and trying to get in direct touch with us. People are now reporting and sharing many spiritual experiences, such as NDEs, OBEs, and Kundalini awakenings. And many people are dis discovering they now have psychic abilities awakening in them, in them, such as the past life recollections, clairvoyance, and channeling. We're all being tapped on the shoulder with an invitation to throw away the virtual reality glasses and expand into full consciousness now. But unfortunately, fear of the unknown holds many people back. Sadly, due to religious and cultural programming, many people are afraid of establishing any connection with the beyond, fearing that demons await to prey on them. And Hollywood movies and stories of Ouija boards and demonic possessions are commonly circulated to reinforce this. But we can help dispel this myth so people can consider opening the door to our innate natural state of connection with our higher selves and all that lies beyond the limited 3D construct. The answer is that you must always go into this exploration with a pure heart and from the high frequency of love, which shields you from unwanted energies, entities, and spirits through, through lack of resonance. You just will not be resonating with them. If you are carrying any fear and or preconceived ideas about devils and demons and possessions, it may be best to just stick with talking to plants or questions about vitamins. But due to frequency resonance, otherwise known as the law of attraction, you will attract what resonates vibrationally with where your consciousness is at. Your intention and your frequency must be high and pure and free of all negative thoughts, beliefs, and expectations before attempting to connect with guides and the spirit world if you really want to connect with the right ones. <laughs> According to the information I currently have, demons and prey entities reside in the fourth density. That's the frequency band just beyond our 3D realm, which is made up of all the thought forms of humanity, both good and bad, and including a lot of fear, if a lot of fear is put in there. Thus, uh, the fourth density, which can be thought of as the morphic field, is highly influential on our, on our th 3D realm here. And this is not the frequency band where you will find your genuine spirit guides. You need to go beyond the fourth density frequency to seek them out. Um, I could go on much more in detail, but I won't here. I just want to reiterate that when pursuing contact with guides, your intentions need to be of a very high vibration, completely free of fear and coming from a place of love. So um, even if you choose to use body dousing to enjoy a two-way communication with plants or to find what foods are, are good for you or harmful to you, this in itself is a great gift. 
So as I said before, it, it, it's, it's hard for Jim and I to imagine how we lived so long without this close daily relationship we share with our guides that so greatly enriches our lives and which allows us to participate far more fully in this amazing journey that humanity is on right now. Um, and just think if children were taught while young this simple, totally natural, fun, and easy technique to communicate with their inner selves and thus the greater reality around us. What a different world we would be living in. So we will warn you, though, that once you begin this exploration into the beyond, you will you soon come to realize that nothing in this world is as it seems, and virtually everything you have been told, taught, and programmed is a lie, or at best, a 180-degree inversion of what is true. So do be prepared, because awakening to this grand illusion you've been living under could dramatically affect your life. You may find that you can no longer play the game as you've been doing, and you may find that you have to quit your job uh, as it no longer resonates with, with where you, your frequency is now and your new values. You may realize that you have to change careers and, and or drop your old friends and even family members and find a whole new set of people that you now genuinely do resonate with. Or maybe you will need to move into a period of complete solitude, which we pretty much did for, for a while. <laughs> Or perhaps you will find passion and peace in discovering your true purpose for coming here and fulfilling your personal soul mission. Or like Jim and I, you might find that you have to leave the game you've been playing all together, that you've been playing in altogether, experiencing a death of your old self and a rebirth of the new you in a completely different space and frequency band. Um, it was interesting to hear Jim Willis talk about his decision to retire. Uh, as a minister and leave behind all the responsibilities, demands, distractions, and busyness that our lives are constantly filled with in order to devote himself to the exploration of finding his spiritual self and truly connecting with Source. And this is precisely where Jim and I are right now. And thus our personal guided spiritual journey has now brought us to the point of selling our beautiful home and rural property, which we created here on Vancouver Island, thinking that we were going to be here forever. And taking off, uh, heading south on a completely new life path with only a 10-foot camping trailer. Very few possessions, no set plans other than making it to Mexico and taking nothing of our old identities with us. We will be feathers on the breath of God. Knowing that our lives are guided, we have come to fully trust the synchronicity the universe provides. Thus, despite this being a multinational meeting here, um, I would like to take the opportunity to publicize that our property is for sale. So in case you happen to know of anyone who might be interested in a little piece of paradise here on Vancouver Island, Jim is putting the link to our webpage information sheet about uh, our property. He's putting that in the chat. So if you'd like to know more about some of the topics I've spoken about, uh, including the great awakening of humanity that is current, that we're currently experiencing, check out some of the links that I put in the chat list. And I'll, there's, just, I'll just put them all back up again. Oh, and Jim just put them all back up again. Oh, good. Thank you, Jim. So, but I saw him fiddling around with the mouse there. So, so um, there's and and and. Um, also, I'd remind you that, you know, if you're a good audio learner like I am, I listen to lots of stuff on, you can, on almost all the, the platforms or whatever, you can make the speed faster. I usually listen at 125 or 1.5, even if it's somebody's a, a slow talker like I'm not, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you might have to turn, turn the speed down. down. <laughs> turn the speed down. <laughs> but anyway, that's an option that all the platforms have now. So, you know, if you in order to get you can get through a lot of stuff faster that way um okay um well um let's see um um once i got this all written down by the way <laughs> and edited about 25 times i asked my guides if i got it right and they said sort of <laughs> so it's all up to you <laughs> Find it out for yourself. Use your discernment. <laughs> and since I've done all this talking, I want to give Jim a chance to add anything he'd like to. Um, we are a team, and as I don't do technology, I guarantee that we wouldn't be here with you right now if it weren't for Jim. So gratitude, Jim. Um, and before he 
takes a little turn here. Our appreciation to all of you, you for your kind attention and apologies for the length of the talk. Um, there's so many side branches I could go deeper into, but I've tried to keep it to a time limit. And we do sincerely hope that you gained a few useful takeaways from this presentation. And we are open to any questions or discussions you have time for. Um, and I'll leave you with a quote to ponder from Jim Willis. Quote, we are the spirit guides we seek to contact. They are the expanded us on the other side of the veil. So always with love and gratitude, actively participating in the Great Awakening. I will say thank you from Summer and Jim. What would yeah. you like to add to this? <laughs> no, I don't there's anything I need to say, really. I can, oh. you know, you, I think you've said it, you've said it all. I said it all. Oh, okay. Well, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So if there's any questions, anybody wants to ask questions, uh, yeah, but talk to us. <laughs> Anybody? If you, if you'd like to ask this question, if you could put your hand up and then we'll take people in there. I don't even know how this setup works, so Jim will tell Jim. Will. Or, Jim or does. Richard. Or, or Richard or somebody. Any, any hands up do we see? No Anybody got anything to say? No one? All those words and nobody has anything to, <laughs> to question? Or uh, Martin, Martin Spalton. Right, so I've unmuted myself. Hi, guys. Um, I, too, have had a, a long life of experience, as you two have been talking about, and I'd like to thank you for covering so much of, the, of what I've been through and resonate with me on so many levels. I think what you did in an hour and 20 minutes or something was absolutely a, a massive compression of it all. And I resonate with yes. most, <laughs> most of it. I've got a few reservations, but I thought that was brilliant. I don't have a question. I just thought it was brilliant. And, you, you know, thank you very much indeed. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you. Chris Moon. Chris Moon. Your sound, Chris. Yes. Yeah, Chris, t turn your mute off, Chris. Chris Moon. Yeah. Christopher, how are you? Up? It took a while. The mouse is being a pain. <laughs> I squashed it. Um, right. Thank you very much indeed. Um, just just going back, again, mostly because I'm slightly paranoid in a lot of these things, but, uh, can you, how do you detect bad influence? Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. What was the question? Sure. Yeah. How can you, t uh, from a garden or, or from a, uh, how can you detect bad influence? Or is, is that Det something? Detect I'm... bad influence. You mean well, that's, that's, that's really something we've been doing at the Yeah, we, so haven't, we haven't had that experience really. So, I mean, I would yeah. say if you're expecting, if you're receiving anything that doesn't feel comfortable with you you know you you, you got to go back and get up into a higher frequency range yeah. i would say well you must remember yeah. too that everything comes from within you yeah. so if you come across something bad you probably took it there yourself right. yeah and it might and it might be something you need to clear or work on yes. sometimes you know our guides do bring us up things that we need to work on so you know you could have a have a good examination of of, of what that is that's a good so, example of resonance there's lots of people who do specialize in um, looking for bad energies and so <laughs> forth and clearing them. And Raymond Grace is one of those. Yeah, Raymond you Grace. To check him out. Who's in that? He's in that uh, list of links there. Raymond Grace, an amazing dowser from from Appalachia, and he does a lot of clearing of energy for people and places and all kinds of stuff. I mean, he's a you should check out his, that talk that I put in there. Yes. He's really yeah. amazing. In fact, you should get him on this. <laughs> get him to come and speak on this podcast. But. Uh, but yeah, sometimes people get other people to like clear energies for them, which I'm not sure, how, you know, again, I'm not so sure how that is because they're, you, you, they're filters. As soon as you've got somebody between you and the spirit world, you've got their filters to go through as well as to get to yours. So really, it's better if you do the work yourself. You can do the work yourself, you know. Um, gosh, I don't even know what to advise, but, but yeah. We, we take take a good look. We, we haven't had that. We haven't had that. No, but that's, that's something we haven't got into yet. Yeah, but take yeah. a good look at what it is, because it might be just be something that 
even your guides perhaps are putting there because you need to look at, you know. There's, that's the, there's lots of stuff coming up at the moment because you because it has to be looked at. It's got to be looked at and it's got to be cleared. That's why there's so much happening in the world at the moment. All, all these bad things have to come to the surface to be, to be looked at and cleared and put away. Hmm. It's, yeah. it's, it's the same with people. Yeah. Are you sure, for example, I mean, so for example, your 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 forthcoming journey to Mexico, is that a good idea or a bad idea or something? Those guides, our guides told us to do that. We were quite happy. We we yeah. thought we were we going had, to be leaving here in our boxes. We created our little paradise here and we were just like, Yeah, we put up solar lineage, pounds, got yeah. two solar pounds, we got a deep well. We were, you know, we're set, we're we, set here. We, we were, were, yeah, we, we were set to ensure forever. whatever happened or whatever, but, uh, but yeah. The, but it's, it's, it, 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 then we had the strange experience, uh, one of these awakening experiences four days apart and uh, we, yeah. we basically got our marching orders. Hmm. They said, you know, you just need to leave everything. There's, there's, everything and yeah. find out who you really are. You there's know? something we can't do here. We've got to get away. We have so much stuff. We had so much possessions, <laughs> antiques, all kinds of stuff, you know, that we'd carried around. So many things. responsibilities. You know, we have dogs, of water, we have plants, to... big gardens, everything. And and when you have all those responsibility and demands, just what Jim Willis found out when he was a minister, he had to, like, do the budget for the church. He had to, like, organize the meetings, all of those. Well, you know, this is kind of like us. So all these distractions from our actual goal now, which our guides have said, is to focus on our spiritual journey. And they are going to be leading us on this as they led us on everything else. But yeah, when, when we got this information and you know, we were told that we were going <laughs> to, we were told that we were going to be, have some kind of like major um, spiritual shift we knew you know, in late, in late February. Up. Right. You know, so we were like, oh, okay, well that's kind of neat. You know? So then <laughs> but when it happened, it was like nothing like what we expected. <laughs> we were like flabbergasted. We were like, what? And we actually were knocked off our feet pretty much. And we kind of like were depressed for a while. She <laughs> had to like crawl up <laughs> on the floor. Uh, um, but then, you know, as soon as we like, as soon as it settled in, we thought, well, of course, of course, you know, this is the path. And this is this, they they gave us this direction and gave us this path because they're taking us, us on a, an amazing new journey of discovery. And we have to leave all those responsibilities, demands, the things we identified ourselves as, you know, the gardeners, the builders, the engineers, the musicians, you know, all the stuff that we were here. We had to we have to leave all that now and just basically be reborn as like innocence, I guess, or sort of. You know. See, people that identify themselves as what they do, they might say, I'm a builder, I'm a plumber, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. If somebody says, who are you? You know, somebody goes, oh, I'm a teacher, you know. Well, no, you're not. You're not. <laughs> yes, yes. Who are else, you? You've got to find out. You've got to find out what you are, really. Mm -hmm. And when it comes down to it, most people don't know who or who what they, they are, are. Separate from all those identities, they don't know who they are. Hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, I wish every success and happiness. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Bryce's <laughs> blessings. Thank you. Okay. If the yeah, Neil, you got a question, Neil? It's not so much a question, I just agree. I do a bit of body dousing myself. And I have been caught standing in the local supermarket buying a bottle of wine because obviously I've got a thing about sulfites in the wine. And I've spent my time rocking in the shops. So I totally agree, this all works. It's great stuff. Now I've recently been doing some house healing for somebody. And where you speak about um, the weeping side of things, tears of knowing, um, I managed to move some attachments that this lady had. And um, she was explaining this to me. And, well, I think she was talking to her family about it. And she just burst into tears. And I think in a way, it was for her, it was a clearing system because she was over the moon with what I'd done. So I think um, it was a great talk. I've enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Rosemary, so Rosemary, got your hand up. Unmute. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, oh, thank you. It was. I thought it was a great talk. I resonated with an awful lot of it, actually, Summer. Um, 
And when you were talking about going away, I just got this jolt in my stomach, which I like that, which I, I do when <laughs> mine, mine, mine do that when they want to kind of nudge me to say something. Because I'm, I'm not oh, no. that great at talking. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's ancestral. There's something ancestral that needs clearing from both of you, I think, is what I'm getting. So I think it's something to do with that. And whether it's not you've got to go to the place to sort it out, I don't know, but that's what I was told. So yes. <laughs> okay. you're right. You you have it right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. So good. Well it's always nice to have an idea of what you're letting yourself in for, I guess. <laughs> have a great time. Thank um, you. So Thank you. Really fab talk. Okay. Come Are there any more questions before we yes. close? Thank you. Any more questions? No. Okay, but well, just before we close, then, um, I had, a, as I said before, I had a quick chat with uh, Summer and Jim on Monday, and um, I th thought it was very interesting. It, they used to live in the UK. It was about 13, 14 years ago? 14, yeah. Yeah, we moved here in 2010. We moved here in 2010 from, yeah. from, from England. And, uh, they, they used to um, travel around, and they had a little caravan with them, which they brought over to Vancouver when they when they. I mean, you know, came over here. In a shipping container, yes. Yeah. And then they sold it to somebody uh, and who's now finished touring and they just bought it back off them. Yeah. Synchronicity. It's all synchronicity. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah. we've taken off on our new adventures in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well done. Yeah. Well, done. well, we hope to stay in touch with you and hear about your journey, um, you know, where you're travelling to. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. Have a Thank safe you very much. Uh, I, know, I know you said you wanted to get down to Mexico before the elections in America. As you go yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would be nice too. Yeah, we want to get through through the country. We yeah. want to get there before it starts snowing here. Isn't and you? before it starts, yeah, we, want, we really want to go before we enjoy, come upon snow on the way down to. So. Depends whether we, we have to sell. We have to sell the place. That's the thing that's stopping us right now. We have to we have, we have to, this place up yeah, to we, get rid of this, yeah. get rid of all our possessions and finding our buyer, and then we're, we're off. Yeah. We're acting as our own executors. Yeah, it's like our old selves have died, and we are the ex executors of our estate. So we are, you know, we have why, why did they have so much stuff? stuff? Yes, and you know, and things that meant something to us once, but now you know we have a real state of detachment. It's so interesting that along with that decision came. A complete detachment, you know. It's like we think, well, we can love things like gardens and books and plants and antiques, etc. But we don't have to own them anymore, you know. And this has been a really big change for us. So yes. Okay, with, I know we've had some problems with the links in the chat. So what I will do, um, I'll save the chat now. I'll uh, put it together, send an email to everyone who's been. Oh, that's the best idea. Yeah. That's the best well, idea. I'll you can just. If you can just copy and paste them in, well, or actually, I'm, I can send you. I'll yeah. send you my email, and you can just forward it on if you want. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I had written them all in. That's probably easier than you copying from that. I'll send That's it to you. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be sure. posting anyway. So if, if people Great. save the chat, um, click they on those three dots at the bottom, that should give you the option to save the chat if you don't already know that, which you most likely do. And, um, and in any case, um, we'll send the email, and also uh, when the the recording goes on our YouTube channel, we'll put the links there under yeah. that video. Super. So Super. People who haven't seen, who couldn't attend tonight, can yeah. can also get those links. That'd be excellent. Yeah. Thank you okay. very much. That'd be great. Happy explorations to everybody. Yeah. yeah. I, I hope you I hope you have as much fun as we have, yeah. and are yeah. happy. Yeah.